This time around, we're going to uh, discuss one of the uh, major fundraising campaigns enacted every year on behalf of prostate cancer. In 1985, I grew a mustache. In, <laughs> in 2015, 30 years later, I shaved it off. And I shaved it off so that I could grow it back again for Movember. Um, I, at that time, I had just gone public with my prostate cancer diagnosis treatment and success with that treatment, and I thought it was time to start giving back, and that was the very first event I took part in, it was uh, November of that year, and uh, we had great success with it, so I'm really happy that I'm able to introduce Mitch Hermanson uh, this afternoon. As Director of Development for the Movember Foundation, Mitch ensures the Movember Foundation receives the funds and awareness necessary to ensure that they achieve their vision of changing the face of men's health. Prior to November, Mitch worked for the humanitarian organization Doctors Without Borders, spent 12 months in the countries of Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. If you're looking for Mitch, you might find him in the workshop practicing his carpentry skills, playing guitar, sailing Lake Ontario, traveling to some far off country, or in the Movember office, which is probably the easiest place to find him except for today, because he's here. Mitch. Um, you guys can hear me OK? Yeah. yeah, super. I don't like podiums, so I'm not going to use a podium. I'm just going to like walk around here, if that's OK. Um, so I, I must apologize. I am not a researcher. Um, I am not uh, a doctor. And I'm not a politician, unfortunately or fortunately. Right? Um, but I do have something that none of those men and women had. And that is one of these beautiful pieces of luxury on my upper lip today. That, that is a mustache. And as all you know, this is the symbol for Movember and has become actually a symbol almost for men's health. And so I want to first say a big thanks um, to Kelly and Steve for inviting me to be here today and putting this on this great event. Um, Calgary is home to thousands of Movember supporters that fundraise for us each year. Just want to do a quick poll. Who has ever participated in Movember or donated to someone who has? Amazing. Thank you so much for all your support. Um, just last year, Movember committed $10 million to Prostate Cancer Canada. So prostate cancer remains, it, yeah, I mean, it's definitely and not bad for a few mustaches, right? Um, and it was interesting when, when Prostate Calgary reached out, they said, we'd love you to come speak at the symposium about prostate cancer. I'm like, great, so I'll tell the Movember story and we'll talk about prostate cancer. They're like, no, we want you to talk about mental health. And I said, that's great. And I'd be more than happy to come. And so today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Movember. How did we get started? How did mustaches really put prostate cancer research back on the map? And then we're going to talk about mental health and actually a little bit about suicide prevention, a topic that not a lot of people like to talk about, not a lot of people realize is a serious issue, but it actually really is. It's something we need more attention to. And it's something that actually impacts men with prostate cancer more than you might realize. Okay, so, but first, we're going to talk about mustaches. We're going to talk about Movember. So the most two common questions I get about Movember is the first one is, do you have to wear that thing on your face all year round? And the answer is yes, I do rock this 24-7, 365. The second question is, how did Movember begin? How did mustaches become synonymous with prostate cancer and men's health? And to be honest, it started as a complete joke. It started with two friends having beers in Australia in 2003. And the conversation that Sunday afternoon turned to 70s fashion of all things. They said, you know, everything goes out of fashion normally comes back into fashion at some point. They're trying to say, what, what hasn't come back yet? Like the mustache. Why hasn't the mustache come back? And I think it's kind of obvious why the mustache hasn't come back largely, but I'm a fan of it. But anyways, maybe they had too many beers that day, but they decided, hey, let's get 30 of our friends to grow mustaches. And so they sent an email out to all their buddies saying, are you man enough to be my man? And recruited 30 of their friends to grow mustaches that November. Came up with some rules. You gotta start the month clean shaven. You gotta grow a mustache. Can't be a beard, can't be a goatee, gotta be a mustache. And you gotta have a big party at the end. And give awards for best and worth mustache. So that's what the guys did, 30 of them, in Australia in 2003. And they had an awesome time. But that's all it was. Movember didn't start out as a charitable initiative. The guys didn't think they're gonna change the world. But what they realized as they went through that month is they realized that the mustache caused a lot of reaction. This is back in 2003. People were coming up and being like, what are you doing? Why are you growing a mustache? Did you forget to wash your face this morning? Girlfriends were mad, wives were upset. So the guy said, I think we're on to a good idea. 
should add a cause to it. <laughs> well, and they said we should add a cause to it. Let our wives, let us do this again. And so they were really inspired by women's health and everything that Pink Ribbon had done for breast cancer and saw there really wasn't anything for men. Did a bit of research, saw that shockingly, prostate cancer is basically the male equivalent. The same amount of the guys get diagnosed and die from prostate cancer, but nothing was being done. There was not really any money in prostate cancer research. As a result, not many researchers in there. And as a result, no progress being made for prostate cancer. So that is this crazy. Let's marry the mustache and prostate cancer. And so then we came up with our tagline. Oh yeah, I guess I gotta grab this clicker here. Which is, oh, oh wow. Tagline, changing the face of men's health. You know, it makes sense. You grow a mustache, change your face. But more importantly, it eloquently describes the outcome we're trying to achieve as a charity. Getting guys engaged in their health. Changing their attitudes and behaviors to their health. Getting them to go, actually go to the doctor. That'd be great, right? Um, and so that's how it all began back in 2003. And since our humble beginning, since those 30 guys grew the first year, we've come a long way. We're now a movement of over 5 million people that have participated. In 21 countries, funded over 1,200 men's health projects, about 250 right here in Canada, every province, coast to coast, many right here in Alberta and Calgary. And along the way, we've changed the game for men's health. We're challenging perceptions. We're making it okay for men to talk. Before men guys, we didn't really talk about our prostate cancer. Most guys that were going through this journey did it in silence, did it by themselves, which if anyone's done it before, I haven't, but it's a tough road. But now we've created communities where guys feel like they can send out an email to all their networks, all their colleagues, that they can talk about prostate cancer health and encourage them to take action for their own. And we funded innovative programs. What's really cool is that Movember's become so big, somebody was asked the question earlier about collaboration between Edmonton and Calgary. You know, in Movember we think even bigger. How do we collaborate with New Zealand and Canada? And we connect all these brilliant minds of prostate cancer research to connect and share not just their successes, but also their failures, so they can learn from one another. So they, we eliminate that duplication of effort, so we can accelerate outcomes, so we can get to the finish line faster. And that's the November way. Now, despite all the amazing progress we've made in prostate cancer health, and we really have, in the past 10 years, you know, we've really accelerated prostate cancer research, what previously would have taken probably 50 years before November was around. We just dumped so much money into it. Um, to the point now where, you know, the next, oh, fingers crossed, you know, 10 to 15 years, we'll see prostate cancer be out of business. You know, it'd be the first major cancer to simply cease being a cause of death and suffering anymore. And that's going to be really thanks to the Movember community, people like yourselves that are supporting us along the way. Now, but despite all that amazing work we're doing in prostate cancer research health, the one area of men's health that we're really losing the battle on is actually mental health. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, mental health is, you know, it's highly stigmatized. It's getting a lot more attention these days. But it's still really misunderstood. I think we'd all agree. You know, we're not taught about mental health in school. We're talking about physical health, sexual health. Not mental health, you know. Um, and I think if there's one thing that all Canadians should really realize, is there's a difference between mental health and mental illness, right? We all have mental health, just like physical health. And similar to physical health, you don't take care of yourself. You might get sick or get a physical illness. And the same is with your mental health. You might get a mental illness if you don't take care of your mental health. Um, so what do I actually mean when I say mental health? Can you define it? It's really hard. Not a lot of us can. It's basically your mood. It's your feelings. It's how you're able to cope through days, challenges, and strive. And just as your life circumstances can change, so can your feelings and your mood and your sense of self-worth. I think we can all say we've gone through rough patches, have a bad week where you're just feeling a little down, and you go through a divorce. That's tough, right? You know, that's a struggle. And the reality is we all struggle. It doesn't matter if you're a PhD or a politician or just a guy with a mustache. We all struggle. It doesn't matter where you're from. And if we all struggle, why can't we just talk about it, have an open conversation, right? So we're going to do that today a little bit. You might be saying, okay, this is great as a prostate cancer symposium, though, and, and you're, you're a men's health guy, so why has Movember decided to fund mental health? Is it really that big of a deal for men's health? So let's ask a question. Maybe we'll just go next slide. And the question is, what would be the leading cause of death, do you think, for men between the ages of 15 and 45? Some people might say cancer, some people, heart disease. Some people say, no, car accidents. It's not. Leading cause of death for men between 15 and 45 is suicide. 
Let me shock you further is that for all the suicide that happens in Canada this year, 75% of those will be by men. Eight men take their life every day in this country. And for everyone that does, there's 23 others that have tried. And when you, you take a step back even further and think about how many men are really struggling in a dark place, depressed, you start to really start to understand how big of a problem this is in this country and actually how grossly underfunded and undersupported it is. I don't care what a politician says. And so, you know, for us as a men's health charity, we look at these shocking statistics. And we started out funding just prostate cancer. But when you see this, Movember said we need to take action. We need to support this. Because if it's not us, then who? Right? And so that is why Movember has gotten involved. And we looked at this and we said, how can we make the biggest impact? You know? How can we do that? And we looked at the landscape and saw, you know, there's a lot of people that have crisis and hotline supports. There's a lot of organizations in that crisis space. But we looked a little bit upstream and we said, there's nobody really working in intervention prevention. So we said, we're going to work in this space here. And kind of the analogy we use is why, you know, mop up the floor when we can try to turn off the tap up here. And so what we're doing is trying to educate men on their mental health, how to take care of it. What is it? And give them the tools and tips and resources so that if they ever go through a tough time in life, they can take action for themselves before they ever hit that crisis point, right? Okay, Mitch, all those stats are terrible. Why do men kill themselves at a higher rate than women? Why do men typically struggle with their mental health? It's a complicated issue, and it's hard to really pinpoint, but a big reason um, is how we're raised. So I'm gonna just take a, a step over here for a second and ask the woman in the room a question, okay? So for the woman in the room, I want you to, if I asked you, if the men in your life are really good about talking about their emotions and being vulnerable, can you put up your hand for a second? Okay, that's great. I'm glad that you have a man in your life that is. But I'd be honest, it's not our guy's fault that we're not. Because we're actually raised that way. We're raised to be that tough guy, right? How many times have you been told to man up, suck it up, you know, grind it out? That macho kind of masculine, stoic masculine ideal is the way we raise our boys. These boys turn into men that be, they're not comfortable talking about their health or their fitness or their health, whether it's physical or mental. They're not ta comfortable talking about what they're going through. Maybe it's prostate cancer. So they hold it in. And actually, research is coming out that's showing that men display symptoms of depression much differently than women. Women are much more in tune with their emotions. They're willing to talk about it. And if they're sad, going through a tough time, they'll cry. They'll talk to their friends about it. They'll seek help. Men, we don't. And so we will show it in different ways. And since we're not really good about talking our emotions, we're not going to talk about it. So we'll self-medicate through alcohol or drugs. We may just work longer to suppress those feelings. We may, result, may take um, more aggressive behaviors, take more risks. And so oftentimes, male depression goes missed by not only family members, but also by doctors. And so this is why suicide and men's mental health is such an issue and why Movember is playing in that space and investing in it. Um, so are there particular times in a man's life that you need to be worried about? So we've done some research and what we realize, maybe just go next slide, is that there are some times. And there are often times a transition. Times where you're getting outside of your comfort zone for one reason or another, where there's a lot of stress involved in your life. So some of these are pretty obvious. You know, becoming a parent, maybe not, but that's a big change. Losing somebody in your life, a job loss, you know, relationship breakdown, these are tough times that guys often, instead of reaching out for help, they'll try to do everything on their own. And they'll pull away, they'll isolate themselves. They won't talk to anybody about what they're going through. Right? And so these are times that men need to worry, need to look out for and be aware of. They should take action and talk and reach out for help. But also for people that are surrounding men, i.e. all of us, to be looking out for people in our lives that are going through a tough time. There's one thing that's not on there that definitely can definitely be, and that's prostate cancer. Going through prostate cancer, that is one hell of a tough time. Not only worried about your health, you're worried about your family. What are they going to do if I die? You know, what about my you know, sexual function? That's a big concern. We'll be talking about that later. But there's a lot of things going through your head, and that is a tough time in life. And if you try to do it on your own, that, that's, that's tough. Thank goodness for community support groups. But really encouraging guys that 
hey, if you have somebody in your life that's going through prostate cancer, or if you are yourself, it's important to reach out for help and talk about it. It's one of the best things you can do for your health. So I'm going to show a video to kind of hit that home right now. Um, I'll be really upfront and honest. I only discovered this video about two days ago. It's not a prostate cancer video. The woman in it's uh, female. She didn't have prostate cancer, obviously. She had breast cancer. Uh, Movember didn't produce this. This is produced by CAMH, a mental health charity in Toronto. They're doing a campaign right now called Mental Health is Health. But it's all about having a battle on two fronts when you're going through cancer. And it's a really powerful video, so I'll let you guys show it right now. When I was diagnosed with cancer, I knew that my doctors are going to take care of me, whereas with mental health, I get lost in the cracks. So the first time I got cancer at the age of 15, there was constant follow-up. There was constant communication between the specialists and myself. When I was 21, we found out that I had cancer again. So we did another round of surgeries and radiation therapy. And then when I was 25, I got diagnosed with breast cancer. That was really terrifying too, but it was like, bam, 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 took care of it. My family was very good about being there for me. She's part of my body. When she feel uh, pain, I feel I can feel pain. You're trying to tell yourself every single day, I'm being cured of a disease. But it feels like you're dying. When you get diagnosed with cancer, for some people, it is the worst thing that happens to them. But for me, the mental health stuff was so much worse. I think grade six or seven was when I started having like thoughts of suicide. When I finally reached out for help and I expressed to one of my guidance counselors that I was thinking about self-harm, I had one appointment with him and I just kind of fell through the gap. I've called a suicide helpline and it was a very, very difficult call for me to make. I think we're failing as a society on a major level if the point where you catch a person is a suicide helpline. There's no words for it. Being trapped in your body, being feeling incapable, and having the worst of the depression attacking you every single day. The only coping strategy that I've found is just shut down your brain, go to the back of it, and wait for it to be over, and just hope that you get through it. You're just riding out the storm, waiting for it to end. That can only happen so many times. Usually when I tell people I have cancer, it's like, good on you for getting through the chemotherapy, good on you for getting through the radiation. Whereas with mental health, the people around you don't know how to deal with it. I try to understand what is depression, what is loneliness, but I couldn't understand her feeling or what's going in her mind. You can help with physical, but not mental health. When people find out that I'm 30 and I'm still in college, I mean, they're like, what are you doing with your life? I haven't had the chance to really settle into my own skin because it's just been too chaotic. When you are young and go through these things, this is very disturbing and you know, she is my baby. She's my baby. You feel like a burden on every single person in your life. I won't ever be able to tell somebody that my depression is causing my pain to be a lot worse today because I can't let them think that I'm the sick girl. I support her in every aspect, you know. She's my very brave child, yeah. If I have cancer again, I'm gonna get all the sympathy in the world, all the time in the world to deal with it. If I'm going through something mental health related, I don't think it's gonna be met with the same kind of understanding at all. Mental health and physical health are, to me, one and the same, and people just don't seem to get that. Pretty powerful video, right? Um, 
I have never had cancer myself, but I can imagine whether you're a male or a woman in this room and you have had gone through cancer, you can uh, sympathize in some way, shape, or form with that. Um, and I think it's this conversation that needs to come more and more because when you are going through something like that, um, I think it is really important that you're not doing it by yourself and that you are comfortable with reaching out. And I think it's that message that we need to get out more and more. You know, in this country right now, we have Bell Let's Talk campaign, which has done great things, right? Bring awareness to this issue. But I think we can all agree that if we want to make real meaningful change in this country, you need more than just one day where you have a hashtag. And so challenging us all to upscale ourselves and learn about mental health and how to be there for the people in our lives is the only way you're going to do it. Because I'll be honest, the government has a long way to go before they can truly provide the services and support that we need. Um, so, there's a recent study that came out in February of this year. It shows that there's an increased likelihood of uh, suicidal death when a man has prostate cancer. Understandable, there's a lot going on. Um, but this, the study also shows 6% of men that go through prostate cancer experience mental distress, and then up to 40% of men uh, cl experience clinically significant depression. Um, these are the men that actually report it. And so it really goes to show that for all of us that are going through prostate cancer, or we have people in our lives that are, or we're supporting those that, that are, that we need to be there for them, and we need to be ready on how to have that conversation. Um, and I challenge us all in this room to leave today, how are we going to do that? And if there's doctors, how are you going to do that for your patients? Um, I could talk about this for a long time, but I don't have time, and I think I'm actually over already. But there's a resource on our website at Movember.com about how to have a conversation about mental health with somebody. It's a conversation that a lot of us don't like to have because it's uncomfortable. We don't know what to say, or we feel like we're going to make it worse. So we just say nothing most of the time, right? But the reality is you don't need to fix them. You just need to be there. You just need to listen. So I challenge you to go to Movember.com. Maybe I'll send it to Kelly or Steve later, this resource, about how to have a conversation about mental health. Just ask, how you doing? Can I, when you want to chat, I'm here for you. And circle back with them a week later. How you doing? Just being there for, them, for someone is probably the best gift you can ever give someone that's going through something tough. Um, and so, changing the face of men's health, whether it's physically or mentally, that is the goal of November. And we've had some great partners along the way, like Prostate Cancer Canada, Prostate Calgary. And together, we can continue to do that. Um, thank you very much for listening, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well done, Mitch. Thanks. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.